Hello there everybody and welcome to the next part of my tutorial mini-series. We're going to go now through the ranks of the prestige levels in the upcoming series. I'm now here on my main account slash the one that I was playing before the full release. And as you can see here, we have already a lot of things unlocked. Of course, there's still a lot to be still unlocked, but uh, this account has pretty many upgrades that we're going to uh, need for, well, way less than what we're doing next, and that's Prestige 6. I just wanted to uh, showcase here real quick that we already have the starting abilities of the races. This is, seriously, try to unlock them from all of the races. This is so powerful, and this is just the only um, heads-up thing that I want to do before we get started with the actual run. The starting abilities are, in my personal opinion, the most powerful little things that you can unlock after you have unlocked the baseline of uh, racial housing and uh, rain punk and all those things down here in the lower ranks. The racial abilities are directly after the racial housing in my book. The most powerful thing, things that will help you to get more consistent on your victories. That being said, we are going to go down here to the levitating monument thing. This is uh, really only a beneficial thing and we're going to just ignore these things. This is a, tutor a tutorial about prestige. So we are going for prestige 6 because this is in my personal experience one of the biggest hurdles along, uh, along of the uh, prestige ladder as this is the point where it starts to hurt. This is the point where the buildings cost more and this is where the game becomes substantial substantially harder because really you will feel that if you are used to the old costs you will feel it so much anyways we're playing royal woodlands here so the baseline difficulty of that map ain't that hard i'm going to go through the modificators below here once we are on the map so i just wanted to uh, give the uh, thought process behind why i go for p6 the next series, by the way, after that will be Prestige 10, and after that Prestige 15, and as you see there, well, I still have to do that myself, I just haven't found the time for that yet. Alright, Prestige 6 is where we're gonna go, and here we have two caravans where I feel like I definitely will pick up Caravan 2, as beavers and foxes are excellent. They can do so much heavy lifting, and... Yeah, well, this is a larger caravan, though. Yeah, well, we're going to go for that one. This would be pretty good if it wouldn't have the chance of locking myself out of beavers permanently. And in a world where stuff is so darn costly, building cost-wise beavers, when you can have them, not taking them, well, the, co the, the caravan must be really bad for, for, for doing this. All right. We are going to go here in our starting things, of course, for the usual villagers. But here I have a lot of embarkation points extra that I can go for. So, well, we are going to go for stone, as this is really useful for clearing out um, dangerous glade events early. And we still have three points left. So I'm gonna go for, well, bricks or fabric. We're going to go for fabric, as this stuff is also quite hard to come by in this biome. It would be also quite... Ah, uh, well, let's, let's go for the small farm blueprint instead. We don't know if we get humans yet, but we got the uh, Royal Woodlands uh, biome, and yeah, this is a powerful start as well. And we take some extra wood right from the get-go, so we have it easier to start out our base. I dropped the food, even if it would be quite nice to have some extra food. This caravan is a little bit low on food, but, uh, well, we should be fine. Mark my words when the people starve. But, uh, uh, you should wait. Uh, it is okay. Okay, so, we got here, first off, wet soil. 50% more building cost. Hurts. A ton. And then some. 
After that, we got higher standards. People will leave 100 person faster if they have low resolve. That means this red bar around their portrait fills faster, so they will say sayonara quicker. Expensive lottery. We can now not reroll blueprints as cheap anymore. 10 amber the least. This is also making it harder to get exactly what you want out of the draft, but it is it is okay. Blight Swarm. This is very important. Every th third clearance, five Blight Rod Cysts will appear. That means up until clearance year three, we need to have Blight Fighter Station going unless we want to have a risk of people dying. Very important to mark that. Rumbling Seal, Storm Season lasts 100 percent longer. You will really feel that, it's quite annoying. And Prestige 1, we need for more reputation. That is standard Prestige level. Okay, this is what we are working with, and this is what we are going to beat in the upcoming scenario. Let's check out what we got here. So we gain Cornerstone rerolls if we gain reputation during Drizzle. Excellent one. This is really good. As cornerstones are often victory mechanisms, this is already a really, really lucky drop, which we might be, um, which might yield us an easy victory even. Quaking Bog, we have slower gathering speed and storm, doesn't hurt us too much. We got resolve penalty for non-housed people, extremely dangerous, as this is stacking up alongside of the storm season. This is a scenario where we totally should consider building housing in advance to have the capability to pick up villagers during the storm, because this can really hurt a lot. Then we got insatiable hunger, we have a chance of consuming twice the food, hurt some, but uh, usually you can counter that, and we have less productive people if they don't have services. Well, okay. It's not the worst set of storm things that could happen to us. All right, let's take a look on the neighborhood. Dangerous Blade here, here, and there. They're all pretty far behind uh, deeper walls. And here we got a geyser location revealed. That is due to the um, racial skill of the foxes. We got uh, more trade offers due to the beavers. And we start with 10 tools due to the lizards. Like I said, it's a big change. You totally feel the difference there. Okay, turn off the coal and get started. We will build ourselves a couple of shelters here to start with. Nothing changes on that end. Shelters are now more costly, but we will still use them at the beginning as racial housing is just not affordable at all, period. So, well, we could go into this direction or that direction, and I'm voting for that one as it uh, closes into a second dangerous glade, which is uh, logistically efficient as it gives us the chance to grow towards another dangerous glade faster. We will eventually open up all three of them, I think, but, well, one thing at a time. All right, as you see there, or would deposit to that we began with is uh, already melting away but i mean that is exactly the reason why i started with the extra wood in the starting uh, caravan as this really does help a lot uh, out a lot we will also dump the lizard into the ancient hearth the fox hearth keeper was uh it's also a really interesting one for the later stages of the game as this once we have a lot of glades discovered, helps a lot to lower the hostility. Can be a saving grace and in certain scenarios. It's worth knowing about this. Right, so we're going to cleave our way directly into the heart of darkness, oh, no, the dangerous glade, because I, I want that territory and I want to know what we're uh, facing on that glade as fast as possible. It's always good to know that. At the same time, we got now, well, this thing not fully staffed out. I don't like that. So, foxes are immune against hostility, um, moral debuff. You see, down there, every level of hostility is at minus two to global resolve. That does not apply to foxes. They're immune to that effect. This is pretty special about them, as you can see here. 
there's the difference. Apart from that, they make excellent Glade um, event solvers, and I really, I really like these guys. So, let's see what we can go for here. Travel rations, biscuit diet, lost in the wilds, metallurgic proficiency. None of these is really a good pick to begin with. We could go for lost in the wilds, but I'm not down for that. As it is, I rather go for the reroll. So, small press, pretty interesting to begin with. Value added tax, guild catalog, well, ugh, that can be sometimes so crappy. Blood price contract. Okay, this is uh, situational, but very good. But we, we are not in the situation where we can expect to lose people anytime soon. So I don't think this is a good choice, and I don't plan to play this playstyle. So it, it's a not a, not a good choice either. The small press, well, that is a really, really uh, tempting little thing. So we're going to stop the game right here and take a look at our first um, draft. We have some building that produces flour. That's already a given. Therefore, we can surely ogle into that direction. In the early draft here, I see the forester's hut as something very, very desirable. I think we're going to pick that one up. But that doesn't help me in the question what we're going to pick here. But I think I'll be going for the small press as a site. Production, uh, production of oil while we're making flour is just nice. This is uh, free fuel and all of the other things here. Well, guild catalog can really let you down and it only is good if you buy something. Blood price contract is situational. Value added tax. We don't even know if we're producing pack packs of trade goods yet. So, and flour is just making your, your city survive. Therefore, we're, we're staying on course here. I don't know what to draft here in all honesty. The greenhouse is also really good as this thing is able to provide things regardless of the season. This is very powerful. It requires drizzle water, but you see that we got here a, uh, a, a sly fox that gives us away the position of that. So I think the greenhouse might be here actually the smartest draft of them all, as we usually would suffer from the lack of intel where we can find that, but this is not a problem right now. So we're going to open up the dangerous glade here, and then we're going to open up that small one to make sure that this is uh, that the icon is not trolling me. It's been a while since I've been playing with that. Oh, we have our first timed order, but hell no. So, dangerous glade event completions. We would gain wildfire essence. Very, very appealing. But here we would gain the same amount of wildfire essence. Yeah, and some food. But I'll, I'll be taking this one because two dangerous glade events will be surely done in some part of the game. So I want to start bringing up these decorations and these uh, collector camps before something else will cloud my mind once more by distracting me from what I want to do here. So that's the resource we got on the starting blade. That is lousy. It's just some fabric. Yeah, good thing that I picked fabric as my starting uh, benefit. You never know. But uh, whatever. So we got that. Let's keep opening packs. We got this one. Well, that's fancy. But uh, 15 minutes is a tall order. Considering that we haven't even, op haven't even opened yet a single one of these uh, glades. I don't want to do this to myself. I don't like the timed orders in general. I am a very... Um, conservative player on that end, in all honesty. So rain engine installation versus the usage of any rainwater. As we are already planning towards the uh, greenhouse, I think this is where we're going to head towards to. And here, copper ingots versus hydraulics. That is produ producing and delivering pipes versus delivering copper bars for better pipe production. Oh, uh, well. I do like the parts on that end, because I haven't already uh, told you, but parts, yeah, these are also needed 50% more, and that is what you really, really 
really, 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 really feel at Prestige 6 and uh, henceforth. Okay, so we're getting those uh, things here together. Camps are being built, decorations are being built, and we even have wood available that we can work with. That is uh, thanks to our beaver friends. Without them, that won't happen. Uh, well, we are almost at the point where we could pick up the resolve by a notch with the... Uh... Oh, we can in a second. All right. So just like that, we have a plus two on this. And I'm going to favor the foxes now, as they can dish out some reputation very early on. There is no such thing as starting too early with gathering up your victory points. Believe me that. So this is where we're going to start with. We're going to enjoy it while it lasts, because it won't last that long. I think opening up that blade will already destroy that benefit. But as it stands right now, you see, every little bit helps. And it never hurts to have taken that, because there is literally no disadvantage of that. None. All right, so let's see. We have a petrified tree. We have huge dewberry bushes. And we got uh, a blue geyser. And we got a cache. All right. That's a pretty decent one. I like it. So we're going to cut down that tree fella, because that's the easiest thing. We will have less housing during that, so shucks for the happiness of the foxes, because that will be the point where that ends. We cannot heal that thing, because the resources for that would be really hard to gather up, and the fuel we gain out of that is very, very desirable. Since we have now foxes, foxes will always do glade events. Whatever event is to be done, it's done by foxes because they gain a speed boost when they do this. This is going to be one thing that you will rely on your future campaigns a lot because you really will need it a lot. Okay, so the good news about it, we didn't lose the um, reputation happiness from the foxes yet. So we're going to go like there and open up the next one. As this will give us uh, security about the uh, rainwater income and then we shall draft some. All right, we got the first collector camp here down, but that ain't too much of a diff uh, important business. So... Crude workstation and the makeshift post. And with that, we have the uh, usual suspects together. So, over here, sadly, we have no harpies to work here, but luckily, we don't have no harpies that have a low uh, baseline moral. So, you see, it all has its ups and downs. <laughs> Let's make it like that. All right. So, yeah, I wasn't right, uh, wrong about it. We got a green drizzle water geyser here. So that means pipe making is not only an order that we got, it is totally in our interest for this run, as the greenhouse will help us a lot. Uh, you see, production of herbs and mushrooms year-round is massive. This is just... Uh, this is just very good. And I just realized that I was talking nonsense. I wasn't taking the fabric starting uh, thing. I took the farm blueprint. So we're safe on that end too. All right. So we won't be picking up the plantation as we have the greenhouse. We and the farm. We don't need more blueprints in that end. The weaver is just, uh, just the next thing that... I will draft that without further thinking. We got a workshop now versus the other ones. At this point, I won't be going for the workshop. The workshop is a pretty decent one, the jack of all trades. It makes it very, very compact in drafting. But right now, we already got a uh, building for fabric. 
and therefore we can be using the brickyard here much better because we're just going to find another building that can make planks. Maybe we can make some where tools and planks together. These happen to combine themselves in one workshop quite often. All right, let's go for the brickyard. I think this is a pretty excellent first draft. I'm quite happy about that. All right, so next up, we need to open those things and let's see. For the geyser pump, we will require quite a lot of planks. So that is sadly the only material that we cannot produce efficiently yet. Well, it all has its downsides, doesn't it? But uh, well, we are not going to go for the greenhouse as our first one. I think we're going to go for the small farm as the first one because the necessary effort to get some produce out of all that here is way less. So we're going to look for the next patch of fertile soil, prepare the geyser pump and uh, prepare enough planks for that, especially, and take the, the smaller yields first. I think this is the wiser choice right now. Okay, so here goes one worker in this uh, area and let's see what we'll require for the other workshops. The brickyard requires merely planks, so does the weaver. So in this scenario, we actually turn off all of the other products, as we really do only need to produce planks to uh, free us out of the current situation. So that's all what this fellow will do here. And there's one brave soul left. Crafting things, building things. So the only thing that my colony currently does lack is an income of food which sucks but uh well we have to deal with that as soon as the the tree is chopped i guess but uh that shouldn't take that much longer so half of that season will be spent with chopping the tree and then we got the workers back during the storm season supposedly but that means we are now running without any food i don't like that but i i i cannot change it it is just what it is as the construction of the farm we are going to prioritize that now i held down left shift while i uh, was on the farm field to apply that on every one of the farm fields this is very important i want to have that done during the uh, during this year so we can fertilize that during the storm season. Ideally, this is done during the clearance season. So I think after that is built, the last fox shall go gathering some roots for the city. Because that is, uh, at that point, just necessary. We're bleeding food. That is really, really making me feel very, very uncomfortable. As the trees here yield sometimes a scrap of food, but that is seriously right now the only source of income and that gives me a, uh, a uneasy feeling about the future of the city. You must know foxes starve faster than anybody else, so yeah. Very important to keep an eye out on that, but we are already on a pretty decent start as the farm can crank out vegetables just like that. I'm disabling grain for the time being as we don't have any building right now that can process grain. So I'll rather take the direct income of food over the other source. I just realized that we have a small trapper's camp opportunity here. Very good for the lizard, but we only have one lizard and uh, that one's vibing in the shrine and I'll let it vibe there henceforth because I think that's just way to go. So, well, yeah, the roads will be built during storm. That's how we're going to go for it. And I even have a better idea. We're even going to unemploy that one fox there. Because our wood income is really high enough. I will keep the five beaver people running though. As I know that we will require tremendous amounts of lumber for this campaign. So I'm holding down left control here again to make sure we're not accidentally cutting into any neighboring glades. And we're freeing up this area here for construction and for the uh, further exploration. Okay, decent enough. The only thing that bothers me is that we don't have the, uh, we don't have enough uh, food right now. That is uh, really making me rather uneasy. 
What, what can we do? There's always something. So, Petrified Tree Event is getting giving out valuable fuel types. Right now, I'm disabling all of these. I'm saving them all up. As long as we can last by just burning wood, I will. As these fuels, sea marrow, oil, coal, can be all used for dangerous glade event resolution, so... Yeah, I'll be rather keeping that. And tell you what, I just made up my mind. We are going to beeline towards this uh, here yet again. You see, the earlier we got our early game exploration done, the better, as this opens up the play the, the, the game field for me, as I can now already plan neighborhoods. You see, I already know that one hearth can go down there. I guess the second one will be uh, going down on the other side. And let's drop the favoring. As you see here, this is a very, very tame and easy storm season. We don't have anything to worry about right now. The only thing that I want to make sure is that the farm is fully staffed out, and I'll even drop a beaver woodcutter at that point, because seriously, four people are enough, and I think with the next caravan we will be seeing more people incoming. I really hope that we're going to get some flower production building going for us quite soon. That's all by the way, also a good reason to force your way towards these uh, these glades as soon as you can. So, I want to make myself the weaver, as we have a decent uh, patch of harvester's uh, camp material things. <laughs> you, you get what I want to say. We have an easy time making fabric, and uh, we should start collecting that stuff as soon as we can. We're going to be seeing the first wave of immigrants soon, and that'll give the, the colony a nice speed up. Speaking about speed up, we can dare to speed up. So right now, the farms are being fertilized, giving us a decent chance of extra yield here, and next year, at least we will pluck some vegetables out of the ground. It's not the most efficient way of gaining food, neither is this, but uh, yeah. We're slowly getting there. This will yield us enough income to scrape by, I hope. Maybe some of the new immigrants will be able to get us some food, but nope. Not that easy. Ah, shucks. Well, we're going to pick up that uh, package here, as I really feel like these guys are just where I want to go. And yeah, we're, uh, we're going to build another house here. Racial housing is currently a little bit too costly for me, but I want to go for that as soon as it is possible for us. As racial housing is really, really powerful. It's one of the most solid foundations you can take for your gameplay. All right, we got three workers left. I just realized that we should totally get ourselves at least one woodcutter going and with the extra hands available. First off, food income. Second off, raw material income. Let's double that up. And third off, keep constructing very, very important things like the brickyard. That doesn't fit here because it's too bulky. Chunky boy. Well, we're going to put this thing there. We don't have personnel right now for the weaver, but that doesn't hurt us too much right now. Neither do we have enough planks for the uh, brickyard, but uh, I'm just placing them down so we have the foundations done. Alright, so this dropped the resolve down because of the uh, hostility gain. We're going to cut back on the woodcutters, pun intended, and check out the thing here. So we have a destroyed caravan. That's one event that we can resolve during the next drizzle season. We could send them to the Citadel, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no. we are surely far away from uh, having that kind of uh, capabilities. So there are easy to pick resources here, which is a bliss. We have lots of fabric production. This map boasts tons of fabric production and we can set up a second farm. I think we're going to set up two farms. And after that, we're going to uh, hope for more fertile soil somewhere else for the greenhouse. I think that's better. I really want to set up the other important basics first, 
before we uh, start building greenhouses and uh, and wa rainwater demanding industries. With the heightened building costs, this is something that I totally need to stay aware of. As we will... Yeah. Let's see. Alright. It should be okay. So we could also go for the rain for, for the greenhouse over there already first. It would be more effective too. But the problem is that the total amount of planks that this requires will take a dirty dawn, uh, darn long time until it is done. And it'll put much less pressure on the colony to just uh, set up one farm here, another farm here, and reap the rewards in the upcoming year. So, yeah. This is one of the decisions where I feel like I, I would love to take the greedy decision, so to speak, but uh, I, I, I won't, as this is uh, not feeling like the right choice to me. All right, thus ends year one. I think we had a really, really good year one. Let's take a look into the cornerstone availability. No quality control. Take wood production, and after each storm, all stored wood is removed, and we gain 50 insects in return. Well, that is uh, something as you can work with. Calming the forest is excellent, as is Woodcutter's Prayer. So, Woodcutter's Prayer, though, is currently not an option for me as I have right now stored a lot of fuels that I want to keep, and we're playing Royal Woodlands, so extra wood production is not that darn necessary here. No, we're going to go for calming the forest, making empathy decisions really tasty. I mean, this is again something, it's one of these, well, you never know if situations, but uh, judging from my experience, this does happen often enough to make it worthwhile to to take that option into account. So, we are putting the foxes on that destroyed caravan, send it to loot, and that's where I do the outro. So, thanks for watching you all. I'm really appreciating having you, and I hope you are having a good time here. So, drop me your comments down below. This will be an exciting run, as this will be much harder than the previous challenges that we've been in. And I'm very much looking forward to make this hopefully a win. So a thumbs up on this video would be appreciated as would be a subscription. Feel free to check out the description box down there. There's lots of links. There's Discord, my Twitch where I stream on the weekends and Fridays and Sundays in the evening hours of the Middle European time zone. I also have a YouTube channel membership system running, allowing you to preview all the things that I have already scheduled and I pre-upload quite a lot. So if you want to binge and want to show some appreciation, I'm really down for that. But don't you worry, all of these things will be released alongside of the time. I don't do any paywalled content. This is not how I work. So that all being said, feel free to check out also PayPal, Patreon, or Buy Me A Coffee. These are also excellent ways of supporting the channel. And a big, big thanks to you if you already did check out any of these. And a very big thanks to you, yes, you right now, for watching this video up until the very end, going all of all these uh, ads that I'm blurting out for myself. I really appreciate having you. I hope you had a good time. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.